yeah. those are images that I, um, uh, I just had a large show in a very large room venue here in, called the American Choral Directors Association. And, um, and I had about 150 pieces in there. The show just went down about a month ago. And uh, so I sent one, there was two images in that group from the ACDA. And um, uh, one was a panel that showed the entire room with all my work in it. And I'll show you some details here in a second. But um, yes. the, uh, it, it showed what the entire room looked like. It's probably, I started this series back in 2018 um, for um, what I called redacted immigrants. And it was my reaction to uh, everything that's been going on in our country. And, yes. um, and so, that was, uh, so that was the first venue that I had was in 2018. Uh, you met Laura Warner last week. Uh, she, was, yes. she was the director of Untitled, or she, it's called Art Space. I, Untitled is the old world, old, old word, uh -huh. and I gotta quit using that. But uh, Art Space yeah. is what I'm calling it. So I had a show there. I curated, uh, Laura and I and George Oswald curated a show of six artists, seven artists. And um, we curated ourselves into it because it was really our goal to have a show of our new work. And so yes. anyway, so that, that was, that, the, the pictures I sent were from the, the recent exhibit. The wall had uh, 150 of these, uh, 140 of these uh, redacted pieces. And then I had three other pieces that I sent details of. Also, uh -huh. I sent you images that I just applied to a show in a museum uh, in Arkansas, one state over. And, um, and I will hear back next Monday whether I got in the show or not. But those are the three images that I sent to the Delta show. And so that's what those images are. So uh, I'm more sort of getting up to, you up to speed of, of what, I'm, what I've been doing. And, uh, and then also, um, uh, one of the uh, one of the questions I will have just for this whole conversation is I like to connect with with artists I have friends all over the world and and I was yes. curious after you hear uh, and see some of my work if there might be someone that you're acquainted with that also I might want to be in dialogue with and see yes. the, the yes. camaraderie there um, so anyway that's that's one of my uh, questions that will be coming out of this this uh, talk or this this session, um, uh -huh. but I, I'm on my iPad and so I can easily walk around and show more of what what um, I have here in in my house. That that would, that would be great. That would be great because I'm I'm just trying to uh, set up I've set up the the my um, phone here so that I can see if, if Paul and the thing about this well is that there's a lovely intimacy when you when the artist brings you around the work. You know, and and I suppose that's what Susan and I had talked about in, in this opportunity. You know, that there's an opportunity, like I went onto your website yesterday and had a wee look at what you were doing. And um, I was impressed with, with what you had and also with um, the topics because they seem to be um, quite timely given the context that we find ourselves in. You know, um, I suppose the, the big thing that I just was reading with another friend there as well was that there's a big concern at the minute amongst artists um, about um, art creators, galleries, and um, particularly with local governments, that artists are crying out for their work to be shown. Artists have had their, their exhibitions um, postponed and then they're coming up with online options. And I suppose there is a concern now that there may be a move that they may not need galleries in the way that they needed them in the past, that there will be such an emphasis on the virtual world that only those artists who have those skills can actually, um, and contacts may thrive and those others may be left behind. So there's a real challenge there at the minute and the conversations here, certainly in Ireland and I would say across the UK would be that, um, you know, artists, um, their ability to create work, you know, they talk about the makers and the takers, so the makers, the, 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 there's the skill obviously and, the, and the, 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 the creativity amongst the artists to make and create work, but then you've also got those who want to take the work. And, and I suppose for artists, not all of them would have the skill that you have, but to be able to, um, to uh, protect that, that um, creative license and that authenticity is very, very important. You know, so space for work will be, while it's going to be, open to everybody in a way, 
there's going to be, I think, increasing competition for people to compete. Do you not think that? No, absolutely. I know uh, <clears throat> in 2017, I took a 10-week webinar in art marketing. And they, they were, uh -huh. they were uh, with uh, Paul Klein up in Chicago. And uh, yes. he has, he's been doing this for, for many years uh, after uh -huh. he closed his gallery there. And I, I, I'd been, I finally took a, one of his classes because I was kind of transitioning from web design and web work and web production, which I've been doing since 95. Um, I, I saw was, that, uh -huh. Yeah, and so I've kind of been transitioning away from that into the, my art career. Though in the last 25 years or whatever it's been, I've produced a lot of work. I can produce a lot of work um, uh, on a weekend. And so I I've, I've pretty much cloister myself so actually this whole environment of being cloistered right now, I feel very comfortable with because I've been doing that for most of my adult life. Uh, yes. So I, yes. I have no problems with, um, with uh, not going out much uh, and only working. Yes. And that's yes. also why uh, Susan asked me to kind of be the point person for Artsy. And so yes. I have uh, been on those dialogues with, with, with them and will be kind of our administrator, so to speak to start putting works yes. up onto Artsy yes. and then uh, and then slowly and things that uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be handling that on the website or not but certainly there's a there's three different venues here that we're also working with the website an inventory program that can interface with the website as well as Artsy which has to be off it's a, it's a standalone so anyway I'm, I'm working with Susan on some of these kind of logistics and that's brilliant. Uh, and so, and in many of my um, uh, my day, much of my day is spent with troubleshooting computers anymore. Just because people are wanting to get onto Zoom, they don't know how. I can I talk them through a lot of this. So I, I have a, yeah. a unique kind of a position there that I can help with both ends of all this. Yes, that's very. I saw that straight away, and when when um, Susan had said that, I was I was curious. I knew that from looking at your website and your your history as well that. You know, not everybody has those skills, and I mean, you, you know, to be able to um, to support and help and to encourage artists, but also know that that, that often a lot of people are, are blocked by the technical incompetence, and if if things are done badly, you could actually do more to ruin an artist's career than actually to build it up. You know. Yes. Oh yes. Well, and I think that it right now everyone is kind of scrambling. Everyone, everyone knows that it's all going online. So yes. there's going to be a huge scramble and going to be a bottleneck. Yeah. And so that's why yeah. I'm glad that that Artsy is recommending a very slow process to incrementally add things to there. It not only ranks you better, but as we all know with Google, if I change my website once a week, I get better ranking. So Google wants you to change your own website regularly as yeah. well. So what Artsy is yeah. is is. Is, is preaching to us is exactly what I would, would preach to a client that they yes. need to continue to you do not want to let it sit stagnant for very long yeah so yes, yes. Um, so I think um, uh, there's there's a lot of opportunity now for artists I think that's why and I don't know if you're aware of it or not but on uh, like tomorrow morning Susan me two other kind of tech guys well three other uh, tech people we will all be meeting and another zoom meeting and sort of going over some of the sort of the back end kind of logistics of how do you accomplish some of this, and yes. um, so uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately those they're all much younger and have a lot more um, um, eagerness right now because I've got plenty to do with my clients as well as with my with artsy now, but uh, and yes. my own art fair because I am going to yeah. start flying to more shows. I I get the emails from Cafe, uh, you know, uh, a call for um, entry. Are you familiar with cafe.org? Um, yes. That is, yes. Okay. So, so that's where um, I've learned about a few opportunities. Most of them, when I tried them, they didn't really pan out. Um, yes. They're, they're, they're competitions. They're, sometimes they're only for people who live in San Diego. You have to wade through a lot of different um, entries, but you can always find one in that. Whole so I entered a bunch of those. Uh, none of them manifested me to be in any shows. So I yes. think there's, uh, it, it was used a lot here the last couple of years. And I think that's going to be another opportunity for people to use it even more uh, to look yes. for things. And um, so I, I'm also trying to figure out 
where my career is going to be going, but also I'm working with Susan. So I'm sort of helping her and we're both kind of making sure that all of our careers are, are on, uh, yes. helping right now. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I'm actually in a similar situation as well because I have been working full time and I've been involved in this last 30, almost 35 years in arts and cultural activity. And as I mentioned the other day, I took early retirement. And while I have my own solo shows every so often and group shows, I tend to be supporting and mentoring artists with their careers. So there's an element of me that is quite cautious. The irony of the whole thing is that there's an element of me that is quite cautious and quite private about my own work. Because I think I mentioned the other day, I'm also conscious of plagiarism. And while everybody believes that they're coming up with something that's very unique, you know, there's always something that is inspired by, you know, you're always inspired by something, whether it's feelings, emotions, or other artists. But there's an element of, that I am I'm quite private about my work. And for me, like you, it's quite natural for me to retreat. And I think for artists, that's the way we get work. We can't, we can't create work unless we are cocooned or we are, you know, retreating. So, so it's, it's quite a normal a normal thing but I I think that that all of the things that you said are quite right I think I think um you and, and Susan are the perfect collaboration because what you're doing now is th this masterpiece of, of what's um being created through the the gallery and then the linkages the authentic linkages whether it's through artery or others it's making those informed decisions because sometimes not everybody is is, is informed and, and as you said they're scrambling for a profile, they're, they're scrambling for an opportunity, and maybe the time invested in where they're actually going isn't the best route. And congratulations as well on your on your um your your latest exhibition. And it's 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 funny because we talk about emerging artists, and in the past, emerging artists were all, always associated with artists who were perceived as younger artists. But we're all emerging. We're all emerging from a cocoon on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis. So, so, so what you're creating from your own perspective, it's really, really important for your own creative self-expression and sanity that you have created time and space for yourself as well. And it's interesting, I mentioned it to, um, to uh, Susan as well about an open call for, from a, 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 an exhibition space. I've been involved in creating an exhibition there, but they've asked in the meantime um, for people to, to put forward opportunities for online exhibitions and I suppose really they're only as good as the images that are created because you're not looking at the artwork and unless it's professionally you know recorded and, and um, photographed that the experience is going to be very very limited do you know what I mean so you, yeah. you you're in a much much better position than that you know because not every artist is a good facilitator not every artist is a good photographer and not every artist is actually their best agent M most aren't correct um yeah. and, 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 and the art of business the the art of business is not does not come naturally to artists exactly i that's why i've been in this uh web business since 95 and you know most uh -huh. businesses fail within the you know first six months or whatever those silly statistics are and i've had a successful yes. business for 25 years and i know nothing about business it's a lot yes. of logic it is a lot of yes. just concern and care and logic and 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 spreadsheets <laughs> uh, uh -huh. but yeah uh -huh. most uh, so most of it is um kind of common sense that uh, uh -huh. and i think it's the same with this art career of mine of not not trying to get ahead of myself not trying to do too much at once but yes know my own pace so i've been very i'm very self-aware that all of those are the kind of things that that i have to be um uh, dealing with and finding the right venue for. Uh, Susan is yeah. one of two galleries, actually one of three galleries in Oklahoma City, four, pardon me, one of four galleries in Oklahoma City that I'm part of. And yes. most of the representation now is gonna be going through Susan, but I have yes. the largest paintings, my five by seven foot paintings are now at two other locations. And, okay. um, 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 and then I have, uh, Ben Pickard has a couple of my pieces. You, Susan, you probably don't even know that, no, but uh, yes. I think he's forgotten where they are. But uh, that's a different story. But I think, yeah. I, so I've I've had a good local representation. What I tried over the last few years was to branch out into other venues. Every time I tried things, even in Texas, I could never get anything started. Um, yes. I I've had really good um, um, kind of local branding, so to speak. Because I, I was, in fact, 
not too long ago, I was asked to uh, judge a, a show down in Ardmore, Oklahoma, in a what's called the Goddard Center. So I do a lot of that kind of thing. I was also asked yes. to judge our downtown arts festival, which is a pretty major uh, um, honor mm -hmm. to actually be asked to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, and and also I started a, a committee venue for them to teach art mediums to the public. And so it had all had to do when digital came in and I was a printmaker for so long and they asked me to be in charge of a committee and set the set the pace and set the agenda for a new committee for the downtown festival that would teach uh -huh. the different kinds of printmaking techniques to not only the festival goers but also the collectors because it's a very yeah. very artists don't even know what the mediums are and so yes. uh, so yeah. a lot of things like that in fact that's one of the things that susan um, has requested is where are our individual um uh expertises lie and obviously, uh, we've got several people here in technology, but if, if ever a collector wanted to know a little more about printmaking and what does it mean to be an original print and what is even a print, I don't even like to use the word print anymore because it's too nebulous, that I, I, I would be the That's right. point person to be able to teach, not teach it, but certainly give my insights in what I've learned over the last, yes. uh, since the 80s when I had a printmaking studio. So I think so yes. finding all of the artists and finding their, um, that one of the things when I have a website client, one of the first things, uh, or one, one of the many things that we ask is, where can you become the authority? What is the, what is the area that we, that we can promote on the website or in your blog, yeah. or in your newsletter. Uh -huh. What are you the authority? Where's the white paper? Where's the video? Where's the, where? We want people to come to you because you are now the authority. So that kind of logic with, even with Susan right now, she is kind of going to be branding as the authority in online right now. Because I don't think that any of the other galleries in Oklahoma City are doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, they all have a well, website, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Well, one of the, if I could come in there as well, one of the things that um, um, I was I was curious about was, um, well, first of all, that there, there's a collective of arts about twelve, isn't it? Am I right? Um, about twelve associated initially with the gallery. Yes, right now. Uh -huh. right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So then the idea then that um, every artist that you have, you know, their, what's their unique selling point? You know, what right. you, you, you've, you know, you've got a little bit of the story behind it. And that's the sort of thing that, that people buy. They set, they, they, um, anyone who's purchasing or wanting to exhibit want, want to know a little bit about the story about the artist, about their unique selling point. And not unlike what, what, um, uh, what you were just saying there was that if you're talking about uh, the potential of, first of all, your collective of artists or the artists that you represent, they, the art forms that they are, whether it's sculpture, whether it's painting, prints, mixed media, whatever. And then their unique selling point in that if they can, or if they are interested in facilitating a masterclass, a podcast or whatever. Now, not every artist is a great facilitator. Not every artist is good about translating what they do to the public. I, I would have spent a lot of my time um, I, I graduated as, a, as an art and design teacher and then I went on then to train art and design teachers and train you know, faculties and taught in university and prison. But then I also was involved in, in um, an initiative which was mentoring and supporting artists across Northern Ireland. So the whole idea was you know, just going from merely surviving to thriving you know, to a more sustainable future. So part of that was to help them with how they promote themselves, how they brand themselves, how they um, can get paid to facilitate master classes or workshops. And a lot of them needed training because it wasn't just about their art form, you know, that, that some didn't particularly have confidence in talking about their art or sharing, you know, insights about their art. So not everybody is actually really good at that. And some people who are brilliant facilitators aren't necessarily brilliant artists. Do, do you know what I mean? So, so if you have somebody who is providing encouragement a space to grow and develop that actually is the catalyst for this to really really thrive so you can have some, and, and, and egos going to be part of it as well there will be there will be egos that will come to the fore in any in any organization or in any um collective you know of people who feel they know more they don't want to be part of something they feel that they're maybe being compromised or that they don't want to give away too much there's an element of that because any partnership is going to be a delicate balance between risk and trust. That, that's, that's, you know, the way it is. But I think if there's an authentic 
willingness to connect a group of artists who are doing different things. Um, that's a good thing. It's where they're competing for this. Sometimes if it's the same um, art form, it can be a wee bit more, um, you can have a collective uh, um, uh, empathy, but you can also have a healthy sense of competition. To, you know, so people will up their game, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and to that end, Susan, I think it would be, it, it would be difficult for Chris probably to do a, 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 a demo. Exactly. But he could, he could easily do a, he gave great class. Susan and I were in a class with one of the artists here, Chris. Yeah. And, uh, and he could easily do some of what he did in the beginning of our class every time mm -hmm. online. He could, and he, it would be a natural for him, by the way. I, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um, because even doing uh, an online gallery talk, he's having problems even contemplating how to do that. And we'll talk that's about that huge, offline. Right. right. Okay. Yeah. That's a huge. Yeah. I think that's a huge challenge, and I think I think that mentoring and that support off, you know, offline is is a good thing because. And, and I'm so so sorry that I'm not I'm not over there, you know, because it's something that that I, that I really really enjoy. And even this idea, I mean, I I mean, I was saying this and I felt so embarrassed after the the first Zoom call with everybody because I wasn't, you know, I wasn't um, prepared to kind of bring everybody around the the house or the space or whatever. But you know that's as much about my my lack of IT skills rather than my passion for what I do. You know, but mm -hmm. the reality is that there's ways in which people can learn that, and even to build up, even in this context, as you know, the one to one conversations or in smaller groups or smaller clusters, that's a really really good thing to do. You know, and it's it can be time intensive, but it is so worth it. It is so worth it, and even the idea of um, you know, and I'm looking forward to you, you know, showing me some of your work and, and saying a little bit about it, you know, to see, see your space, you know, and, and I was conscious as well of, um, well, I, I was, I did a fair bit of talking the other day, I was conscious that those that didn't speak too much, you know, and, um, and it's, you're, you're kind of curious that sometimes not everybody feels comfortable speaking in a, in a, in a, a forum more than two or three or four or five people, you know. Well, and I'm certainly one of those, but on the other hand, um, there's people in there who've never spoken and I wanted to give them a chance to talk. Uh, yes. So, it, and it, I, as you might have guessed already, when, when we get together, Susan and I, we can brainstorm for hours. So there's yeah, a lot I can see that. that. I can there's see a lot, that. Uh -huh. A lot of good ideas get generated. But, on, yes. but to, to your point, I am going to show you something because also I'm, I'm on an iPad. And it could be that uh -huh. I'm recommending if Susan in, in the future, if someone has an iPad or an iPhone, that would be much better than a laptop or a computer. Okay. I think and you're so, right. I think because right. I'm gonna see if I can actually I, I think, think I can you're right. This. Yeah. So I'm gonna turn this around and um yeah. me, this might be a little too glary, but so I have I have oh, a very good. I have a very good. tiny uh -huh. Okay, I this is my that's my workstation, my computer, television. Yeah. This is this is my workroom. This is everything. Um, so my point is that that I decided to create a wall just of my own portfolio. That's one of the Good. spheres that, that I sent to you, and those are the yes. two pieces that, that got sent. Those are the three pieces that got sent to the Delta show, and you might yes. have seen these up on my website. But these are just I little did. pieces. I I made about nine or ten. I sold three, whatever. And I decided I'd like them too much to. Keep. I wanted to keep the rest. Um, yes. The redacted. This is as much as I've got out because it, it's I a loved. Huge I love those pieces. I, I love those pieces. Yeah. That, I that really was did. My, that was my statement to um, about the whole show. I could send that to you if you're interested in reading it. Um, yeah. But, yes. Uh, yes. Because I, I I went on and I, I was curious about that particular show. I loved. I love what you did. I love the way it was exhibited. Um, I went, I went, I, I viewed the way that it was laid out. I thought actually, given the context that we're finding ourselves in at the moment, where people are being buried without, you know, recognition or, you know, um, fun you know, proper funerals and all that, I just thought there was, there, was, there was actually something that was very, very precious and very relevant about what you're actually doing now. And the tags for me were very important. I thought oh, it was yeah. lovely. I thought it was, a, very, I thought it was very powerful. Yeah. A child, it's a, um, many of them were terms that I had to learn. Um, 
but my point is that uh, with that show, um, I got such a good reaction to it. I'm seeing if I can move around here. So just some other older works of mine, just. Yes, they're beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. Uh, I always work in color on something, but this was also a bit of a series of a little, uh, my little shadow figures. I called them all shadow figures. But you see, I love that. I actually love that because I, I went out for one walk and I was very conscious of going out on my own. And then I, then I realized that my shadow was walking with me, you know, and I, particularly now when you sort of feel, my father used to talk about guardian angels working overtime. And uh -huh. I, I love the play of the shadow that you, you did, you had in your work. There was one that was, I think, God, and there was a figure um, uh, standing, and then there was one inverted figure looking down. I, I, I love that work. I mean, that's so relevant now, you know. Yes, and um, I, I'm another older piece that I never finished, but I'm using it to close off the, the light coming in from the door. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm actually walking very quickly now. This is, an, this is actually walking into my studio. I, I have a converted garage that is, uh -huh. is my studio, and you're going to freak out, but that's where I work. Oh, Mark, that doesn't freak me out. Believe you me. I, I will show you before we end this call where I, what I'm doing at the minute because, honest to God, it is um, it's refreshing to see to see that to tell you the truth. No, no, that's <laughs> normal. Your your workspace. I'm so impressed with your workspace. Uh, see the piece there to the right, to the right of the uh, of the. Uh, see the figure piece. Just zoom yeah. in on that. That's a very powerful piece. Top right, top right. Yeah. What's that one called? Uh, it's not even finished. I just sort of. Did it one day, and I didn't. I haven't gone back to it. Yeah, no. This it's a lovely, it's a lovely piece. There's something about it. Again, it's it, it appears there's an elemental aspect to it, and 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 again, when you look at the cloud series as well, there's almost a figurative, emotive kind of feeling behind those as well. You know, um, it, it's funny because you know you you talk about your earlier work. Then that, what's that one called? The one below that you're showing me now. Oh, I, I do have a title for this one. It's called uh, uh, The Little Boy's Room. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. There, there's a little escape hatch in there. Oh, so it, it, yes. It, it was more very re self-revealing about things. And that's a wall yes. full of graffiti and, and all kinds of things. Um, yes. A little self-portrait I did one day. Just uh, uh -huh. a little essence of a portrait. But um, I'm looking here. The, uh, I mean, I've got stuff everywhere, of course. We all do. Uh, we all do, yes. What's the one with the heart, the figure in the heart in the background with the green background, Paul? That actually is the piece that started my whole series of, um, of these. Um, Can you pull uh, that out? Can you pull that one out? Oh, Are you able to pull that out? <laughs> so, to, so to speak. Just a minute. Let me see if I can just get rid of the... Uh, of this yeah if that will work um, it's it was from a dream I had and it actually started yeah. a whole series of these shadow figures um, it, that is gorgeous that is really really gorgeous yeah, and, the, and, and even the black and white there are a lot of small hearts in there at black yes. and white and that kind of yes. started the black and white series and this kind of started yeah. a whole series of monotypes that I did. I sold most all of them, but I liked this painting, so I kept it. That's beautiful. I love that. I love that. Well, Paul, have you archived your work? I think that's what a lot of artists are, are, are finding the challenge. And it's one thing looking at what work they, 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 they show, you know, and then what work they, they archive. And it's funny because, because the teacher in me um, um, encourages people no one to throw anything away I know which is pretty impossible but as you say it can be the actual the little gem or the little um, the seed that sparks off a whole series that's an interesting piece see the piece that you're showing yes. me now was that part of the this, cloud series or was that one of the beginning ones or where, where was no actually this was one done not too long ago but it kind of got I call it the alchemist dream he's the alchemist yes. and yes. Uh, and it, it created a whole series are you familiar with the with the psychological term parad pareidolia? It no, I'm started, not. How do you spell it? How do you spell it? P uh, P A R A D O L I A maybe pareidolia. Yeah. 
that is I'll find, it. I'll find it out. What does it mean? What does it mean? Basically, it is, it, it's kind of like when we look at a cloud, we, we see things in it. It's the oh, yeah, yes. It's like, it's, it's like flames in the fire as well and that type of thing. Yes, right. I can, I, yes I'm with you That's on that. Yeah. All of these are little elements that turned in. I don't have the painting. I could send it to you, uh, JPEG. But those kind of, that was one of the first ones that turned into, Susan, to that big painting that I did called Pyridolia. Oh, yeah. This is the one, this is the one that kind of started it. Mm. And, uh, that's, and lovely. That, that's, that's really the, lovely. A bit of the cauldron to get it all yeah. started. But, um, and then this was a piece that she had in the gallery for a little while. No, I love that piece. Uh, a little 12 by 12 um, and a little drawing, an oil drawing. I do a lot of drawing with oils. That's beautiful. Uh, uh, Mark, that's beautiful. Honestly, you're, I, love, I love what you're showing me. You know, they're, they're, they're absolutely beautiful pieces. You know, very, an old, very... An old, old photograph that, I've, that I uh, have and I then did a lot of manipulation on it and put that dark figure behind it. And in a way, uh -huh. that's kind of the piece that started my whole um, redacted series because it all had to do with the concept of duende. Are you familiar with the Spanish term duende? No, what does Fed that mean? Federico Garcia Lorca is the poet who uh -huh. um, popularized the term duende. And it's basically the um, it, it's that spirit that inhabits, oh, let me turn that around. Uh, nope, yeah, there you uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah. go. It's that spirit that defines, um, um, uh, 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 usually referring to dance or ref referring to flamenco dance or, oh, or yes. flamenco guitarist or the bullfight. It is that, yeah. it is that. It is when you see someone that goes beyond the 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 expertise. They actually ha are enveloped with the spirit called Duende. Yes. And yes. so, and so when I read his book many years ago, mm -hmm. I decided that I was going to have a show of three three rooms over at Untitled at Art Space at Laura's place. Uh, Susan, you don't even know this, but I was going to have a a show there, and it was going to be basically the three stages of of Duende. And so it was going to be in my terms, it was going to be sort of the muse. That's the first, the first concept. Yeah. And with, when you have the muse, you would have the, uh, uh, probably my, my black and whites, all of the subtlety, yeah. the, the very calm, the very tranquil, um, uh, though muses can be bitches, we know that. But it, yeah. in this case, it was yeah. going to be that the calming black and white series. And then in the next room was going to be uh, basically, a lot of what you see, a lot of my color pieces, a lot of play, a yes. lot of different, uh, like you saw downstairs, a lot of those. Yeah, yeah. And then the third room, the third room was going to be Duende. So that was going to, and, and so the second room, some people call that the angel. The muse, the angel, and Duende. And, um, uh, and so the third room was actually, I've got a few pieces that are kind of hidden away that I started on the Duende con concept. But that one uh -huh. photograph that I showed you, that, that, figure behind him yeah. when I did that when I said here's my first statement of Duende and so that's the fire behind the person and um, not, just, not uh -huh. just a shadow not just a shadow uh, but Duende has a concepts of irrationality of a bit of a trickster of a bit of a, a uh, um, one of the, the concepts of, of a very keen awareness of death all of those things are, so Duende is a wonderful uh, book. If you, In Search of Duende by Federico Garcia Lorca. Um, uh -huh. will, you send me, will you send me that? Uh, um, uh, sure, okay, I'll send that to you. Uh, how, how, do you spell, how do you spell Duende? How do you spell it? D-U-E-N-D-E. D-U-E-N-D-E. -E. D, -E. D -E. all right, I, 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 I get that, don't worry, that's great. So I think, <laughs> That's what kind of got me started with, um, in fact, this series of the redacted. It kind of began with that photograph, and uh -huh. and, and and it all kind of was all together. Don't it, it wasn't yeah. sequential, but I realized when I did that photograph that here is it, here is where I want to go with with my artwork, and that is where it ended up <laughs> the next day. So it's like it was such a beautiful little yeah. transition there. 
In I, fact, but just know, watching but you, watching these yeah. on the wall, since I put these on the wall uh, yesterday, or two days ago, in the anticipation of our call here, yeah, the, I, yeah. these are old, old pieces. I, oh, they're five years old. I, and I haven't, they've been in a box for five years. Um, no one's seen them except close friends who come over and want to, want to be uh -huh. harassed by me. But um, yes. what, what already what's happened here, uh, it, it, not that I'm going to go into all this, but already the ideas that have generated for the next series that is, a, again, what I'm trying to do personally is I'm trying to combine everything I've done into everything I do. And well, so do you know what I was going to say? Do you, do you know what I was going to say? When I'm looking at your work, I see great energy in those pieces, the figurative pieces there, and your, you know, the coloured pieces, and I see such stillness and such intensity. But the other thing that, as you're speaking, is this idea of a retrospective. I feel you're talking me through a retrospective exhibition, where you started and where you want to go, and none of us know where we're going to end up. Right. But the beauty of the the original pieces that you still have. You know, and I mean, I, I, can, t I can give you a, a, a less than one minute to show you around, you know, my own as well. But I'm just so, honestly, I am getting so much from this. You have no idea. And I think even if it, even if it encourages artists to get their space tidy, to get their, not even tidied, but to actually look deep, mind deep and see what they've got. And to start even to create a timeline and, and go back over what they've done. Because mm -hmm. I think you've got to go back before you move forward. You have to actually retreat you know and i'm just going to show you how this will make it this will make you laugh um or, or cry i'm not sure um <laughs> but, uh, the pieces i think i was showing you just when you were talking there <coughs> about the shadow pieces you know um this idea that figures and shadows mm -hmm. are something that, that I'm, I'm kind of working interested in at the minute and yeah. i mean th th this is i have kind of lost all interest in time and up and, and doing things at the minute because I'm involved in so many other other kind of things but um but this idea as well you talk you know this idea about the, you know this idea of the place between us a place between yeah. heaven and earth and yes. I you know and this idea of, of figures coming through and a lot of it I mean I would be quite spiritual you know I wouldn't say I'm religious but it'd be spiritual but this painting that I have and I mean this 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 will give you look this is my space this is my garage <laughs> It's huge. Right? Yeah. It's huge. <laughs> this, this, this is the garage, right? But this is me trying to tidy up, right? Yeah. This is after spending hours <laughs> of tidying up, and I still have an awful lot more to do, right? Um, because, um, and this is the package that was to go to, to Oklahoma. <laughs> oh my. So I haven't, uh, um, haven't, you know. <laughs> and then I have lots of other ones, but there's a piece up here. You, you can see part, we'll see the eyes. Can you see that piece of the green? The old um, uh, um, frame on it. Can you see that? Oh, in I, the distance. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. And that was a piece that I did. I did that about 30 years ago. But it was a starting point for a lot of figurative work that I did and lots of, you know, um, other bits and pieces. But, you know, then then I would have had, a, a, I think I showed you the, um, I mean, if this quote I have for years, go confidently in the direction of your dreams, you know, and, um mm -hmm. But but it's like it's like um I like I have things just all packed up and and you know but there's there's a part of me that is trying to I mean these ones here I want I don't know whether you do it or you want I want to paint over them again. Um I have a series of um like three like stations of the cross, um, you know, humility, dignity and serenity, you know. Trying to declutter, trying to declutter my head to tell you the truth, mm. and um, then these other pieces um, here. I mean, I mean, as I said, that that was um, that's twenty twenty one years old. That piece there. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, these are artists' work that I would collect. You know, um, the, the the inverted um, mermaid tail was part of the the exhibition that I had. But you know, there's there's pieces, you know, like this piece here that while they're quite personal, they they are um they're about a mark in time. Do you know what I mean? So this idea of um if you were to get out all of the pieces, I mean I like you would have work that would, would have been sold, work that has been, you know, in, in different places and different um part of different exhibitions and things, but um but there are there are mark in time, 
you know, and they're connected almost by a little invisible um, umbilical cord, you know, of a period in your life, almost punctuated by an experience, a relationship, a friendship, a loss, or a gain, you know, and they're very, very precious to you. So, so they, they make sense, whether they make sense to anyone else is immaterial, but people then are drawn towards them because there's something that's triggered by what you've actually tapped into. And, you know, when you look, when I, when I see that you, you, you know, you on screen now, you could be at an exhibition of three different artists at the minute because the pieces behind you, the figurative pieces on the right, the colored pieces look totally different. Then you have the detail of the, of the beautiful um, oil painting, or, you know, oil drawing. And then mm -hmm. you have the lovely pieces from the redacted series, you know. So we all have the cap capacity to go through a whole range of different even art movements in one one week, one one year, one one or two exhibitions, you know. So I suppose from a confidence building exercise, I, I, I don't know how you feel, you know, to actually to sit down and look at what what have you what have any of us achieved? And I'm talking about myself here as well. Um and um, because I think we are worst critics, I think we can tear ourselves apart, you know, and that can be a very, very vicious thing. But sometimes we have to fall apart and start again, you know, mm -hmm. um, and start over. I'm going to show you one piece that's behind me because I, these are three series. These are three of my series. Mm -hmm. I, have a, yeah. I have a lot more. And uh -huh. the, the, there's just no room to show everything in my little tiny house. I don't live in a tiny yeah. house. I live in a small house. Yes. Yeah. It's compact. Uh-huh. Yeah. I like your lighting as well. I have to say, Mark. Kind of part oh. of the color series. Yes. This is, what, this yeah. is when I thought I was going to go to a festival. And I thought, I need a festival look. And so this was the mm -hmm. look I came up with. Um, uh-huh. There's one one of those. Uh, and Susan, I don't think you've seen this one, but this is this is part of a much larger series of mine. I call this one uh, a security blanket. It's a self portrait that I did back when I had dark hair. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, very good. Now, is that is that a, is it a print as well as a mark? I think if you so, so the face. Is... Yeah, I see. There's a lot of reflection. Let me turn this light off and see if that helps. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm gonna have to do it this way. Um, it looks like a, a face, and then then the body is different. Is that what it is, Paul or Mark? The body is all threads oh, from my shredder. Oh, and brilliant. The black, and the black is all a cut out paper. And then that is an old self portrait that I did. No, you can't quite tell. Anyway. Yes, I can see. Yes. But my, my I saw a glimpse of there. Yeah. My point is that, that there's a whole series of what I call security that I've been working on for the last five years as well. And that's that's one, Susan, I don't think you've seen. I haven't seen that, no. Yeah, and and so that's the series that I'm, there's so many series that I want to continue with. That one that I call The Alchemist Dream is a series of paintings that I'm wanting to uh, to uh, to pursue because now that I'm going to clean this, wall, I only did this wall for you. So I'm going to take all this stuff down and that's going to become my easel. Um, and uh, um, so that easel, that that's where I did all of my five by seven foot paintings back there. And um, so I'm going to turn it into an easel again because I want to take that small painting. I have some four by five canvases ready to go that I'm going to put up there. So that's going to be my next series. But I have so many series. I have so, I have so many directions that I I'm pursuing all at once. I try to work on everything at once, and because uh, uh -huh. everything influences everything. And you see else. You see, you see, in ter I, can, I, I can see that there's cross fertilization and everything that you're doing, you know, and I can see how, um, you know, it's lovely that you put this together, you know, to, because, uh, but, to, but to record this, to, to actually look at, at um, it's like several seasons in, in one day, you know, in terms of, 
um, the exhibitions that you know that you're having in your own space. And there's yeah. something about that as well about um, you know what you have behind you and what you what you're creating. You know. Well, and Mark, it occurs to me too now with the online exhibition platform at Artsy, we have several exhibitions that you know can come right out of your studio and home. Well, and I could also because I have I've I've purchased several URLs. So mm -hmm. I I for instance this redacted was actually one of my personas, so to speak. It's my it's my family name, my Greek family name, Barkouris. So I've actually signed everything Barkouris with that. Uh, so I so I also bought Barkouris. Uh -huh. um, so I could actually make online exhibitions with my different uh, series. Uh, that's why I also, and Susan, you don't know this, but I also have about four URLs that I purchased a while back for Art Fair Oklahoma City, Art okay. Fair Oklahoma, things like that, because I wanted to initiate, I got too many ideas, I wanted to initiate an art fair in Oklahoma City, just online, purely online, almost fake, because it would make it appear like that we're going to have an, an art fair here, but it really was just an online art fair. For Oklahoma and uh, so I went on and purchased those. One of my other concepts is I also bought uh, markbarker.art because there are other uh, Mark Barkers around the world who spell their name exactly like mine so I have not reached out to them yet but I want to have an, a group exhibition of the, the other Mark Barkers around the world so that's why I bought artbarker.art uh, as well as .com so <clears throat> well, Mark, anyway. you know this. Uh, Meg and I have been talking about why not have an art fair in Oklahoma City? Why does everyone have to go to Dallas? That's right. So, so that's why I, yeah. I, I'll have to send you those. I'll, I'll put a note here. I'll send you my art fair um, um, uh, URLs that I. <laughs> all they do right now is just mm -hmm. just redirect to my website. Uh, right. All of I have I probably have about six or seven different domains that I've purchased just in anticipation for instance i have another one called uh, trt uh and i i love the, the play on the word art and trt and so trt will be another one of those kind of art venues that i had planned on doing uh, i also have abordinary uh abordinary is what i wanted I, I have a whole series of cards that i've created over the years since the 80s uh, and so i wanted to be able to market them online, and so that was my abordinary. My, 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 my point here is that there's a, I have a lot, and I got a lot of ideas, and I keep working on everything at once. So we do need to talk about this art fair, and I'll, yeah. I'll see if any of these would fit into what you're talking about, mm -hmm. because I own them. That's fantastic. That's, that's interesting. Uh, Noelle, I don't know. It's, it's about, um, we have about six minutes left in the hour if um you know this is a good time to kind of bring it to a close and uh, oh, we, lost just, her. we lost her yeah yeah I, I it looked like it got locked up there a second ago yeah um, yeah well maybe she'll come back on yeah yes uh-huh <clears throat> anyway there's a lot that um that obviously that 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 i have and i haven't even shown you all my series yet so. oh my gosh i mean it's just a treasure trove <laughs> Well, but you know the figural pieces behind you i know that you've shown me some of them i haven't seen them displayed in that way though yeah now i'd love to have you know have an exhibition of of those as well just well and i've got probably in the drawers i've not framed them but i did a bunch of monotypes a while back mm -hmm. and uh, um probably have five or six maybe seven more uh Typically, when I work on a series, just mm -hmm. FYI, when I work on a series, for the most part, I keep my favorite and I don't sell it. I don't even show it. And so I have like a lot of my cave series, for instance. My cave series is, um, uh, I, kept, I kept the first one that I liked so much. Mm -hmm. And I have, so I have the easy to be able to show off some things in a hurry. Uh, well, I, wonder, I wondered which, um, you know, if these are all pieces that you would part with or are some of them, you know. That's, what, that's one of the issues uh, because all those pieces I did in Leslie's class, they're not, they're, they're student works. Right. But, you know, I've, I've, I've had three people who want some of them. Right. Um, but I sell them. Uh, 
not really sure because they might become part of a collage painting. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I wanted to keep those for was um, to be able to use them in a bigger canvas or glued to a bigger canvas. It's not called collage. Um, Josette uh, corrected my term there. I have to go find her term. But there's a, another word for when you attach um, a canvas to a canvas. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not called collage. And so a lot of those, that's what I was going to do with them, was okay. re resurrect them and sort of salvage them, in my term, salvage, mm -hmm. um, uh, poor works by making them part of a bigger, nicer work. But especially um, the the figural ones w that are part of the shadow at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Those are ones that um, I, I did those two thinking, here's the, here's the beginning. Now, do I want to pursue this? Mm -hmm. Yes, but I'm going to table it for a moment because mm -hmm. I need to get to something else. And so I, 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 I tend to flit around and jump back into other series uh, very quickly and then not... Um, because um, I, I pursued the security at that point. And uh, um, by the way, that that one up there, yes, that burqa, it's a yeah. burqa made out of um, security um, envelope. Uh -huh. So what I did yesterday is I made face masks oh. out of security envelopes. Okay? Oh, did you? Oh, wonderful. So, <laughs> like, uh, why not? And so my point is that I, I, I flit back and forth too quickly to all of these things and try to um, 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 just keep, keep the energy going. That's all. But uh, everything, you know, even like in your, you know, in your tight space, everything informs the other. I feel right. like you're working, you're working in a circular fashion in a way. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think, Mark, you are blessed with so many skills from what I can see. Your, your, your um, technological wizardry as well as your, I mean, when I see the, the, the sequence of your work, the depth of your themes and the range of your skills, I mean, it really is quite prolific. Well, I thank you for that comment. Yeah, I've been trying to um, uh, keep honing my skills, even though I've been working on the computer for 80 hours a week, some weeks. So yeah, yes. it's it's quite a challenge to keep all this going, and that's uh -huh. why Susan and I uh, took some classes uh, last year with, um, uh, with with Chris in some uh, a, a color theory. I took it further with some figure painting. Uh, I also took a figure drawing, uh, just because I don't have time to do a lot of that. Might as well take a class, and it was a great opportunity for access to models and a good teacher. So yes. always trying. To Right. Keep 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 that honed that skill honed. And there's a, there's been an increasing interest in online classes now. There's one or two names I'm going to give you that I think would be good for you. To, are you on Facebook at all? Yes. Yeah. Well, Colin Davison, he is an a, a, a distinguished artist from the Royal Ulster Academy. And there's another guy, um, uh, Jack Packenham. I send you I send you details. He's also yeah, a brilliant exactly. dancer. It's a brilliant uh -huh. a disco dancer. I think he might be in his late seventies, early eighties, and uh, he he did a lot of work um, inspired by the the troubles during you know in Northern Ireland. He was a, he was an English teacher, and then he developed his painting skills. And his work really is a record of um, living through Northern Ireland during the troubles. And but he was fascinated. His wife died, I think, about three years ago, and he was always fascinated by dancing love music and he used to go to this um a uh, dancing uh, a club and uh, there's a a, a a group called cashier number nine young an up-and-coming group and they contacted him to see if if he would dance on their video of their song which he did do and he's just an amazing character you know and um then there's there's another um artist i'm just thinking of a Oh, the, there'll be a few people that I, I, I could connect you with, but definitely to go onto the Royal Ulster Academy website because there's little films on each of those artists as well um, that you, you'll see too on the website. Yes. But one of the things I think to start off with, with the artists, you know, if you think of the 12 apostles or the, the 11 or whatever number of, of um, artists you're currently with within the, the gallery, that mm -hmm. if each of them actually are are interested in literally doing what you've just done you know 
and maybe they already have that, 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 that little nest where they have the stimulus for their minds and their souls and their hearts, as well as, you know, a sequence of their work. Because if we were all to do a timeline and look at a retrospective, I mean, I could see, I could see you doing a retrospective of your work with a number of pieces. And I love the idea of you talking about the different rooms and that theme of um, redactive. I, I listen to a lot of music as well when I'm painting. And I've just after, um, I'm just after um, listening to the Cardigans and their, their song was Erase and Rewind, you know, and I was just thinking of, you know, psychologically things that we have to do. We have to clear the space before we can start again, you know. And often we go back to our source and we don't even know where the source came from. But, but usually it's an emotion, a feeling, a loss or a gain, you know. Perfect. Yeah, I, I, since I can't quite hear everything you're saying, I would appreciate the uh, links sent to me because those names, I, don't, I didn't gather them, yes, by the way. I will. I'll send those to you. I'll send those to mm -hmm. you, Mark. Well, Noel, thank you so much for your time. And Mark, thank you for setting aside the time and setting up the exhibition space. It's lovely. <laughs> the living room. Uh -huh. So wonderful. Uh -huh. it's so wonderful. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you so much, Susan. And thank you, Mark. Really, really enjoyed it. And Mark, I find it really inspiring to listen to you and to see your work. And I'll send you through the links and I'll drop you an email now. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. And in, the ins inspiration is, is very mutual. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant. All the very best and keep well and safe, folks. Keep well. Yes. Well, thank you all. And again, I wanted to just remind you, I've recorded this and we'll see if there are parts of it that we can use later as well to share. Sure. Okay. But thank you. Brilliant. Okay, okay then. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.